Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once more to Gaia Green Speaks War in the West. Um, so today, we will be taking a look at a scenario. I will not be creating a new series with the scenario as of yet. That will be something that comes out most likely after I return from holiday. So this is just one, just to see what the scenario is like, and just to see the strength and the possibilities that we would have in such a scenario. Now, after their success in France during the, the summer of 1944, the Allied forces have found them progress slowed to crawl by the German defences, compromising the West Wall. Now deep in winter, and still on the German border, the Allies have decided to wait until spring before launching further offensives. However, the Germans have other plans. Skillfully preparing for a surprise offensive through the Ardennes to recreate the success of 1940, the Luftwaffe have also planned an airstrike against the Allied air bases, codenamed Bonaplatte. Right then, uh, the scenario seeks to recreate the Battle of the Bulge and its aftermath. An Axis player should seek to capture Antwerp and defeat the Allied Spring Offensives. The Allied player should seek to defeat the German Offensive and cross the River Rhine in force by early March 1945. So this scenario is only about 12 turns long, so it's not a very long scenario at all. So let's take a look at this then, shall we? Um, yes, it doesn't really matter about the name. Okay, so we start with Axis Turn 1, which is fantastic. Now... Interesting. So Antwerp is our ultimate goal. Not far from our lines, only about... Hmm, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 miles, kinda. Approximately. Raw defences are something to behold. So, the weather. Right. Light snow. Within the air. Cold. Interesting. Right, so this is very important then. As we can see here, the weather is technically poor. But it's cold. It's uh, pretty cold weather. It's not fantastic weather. It's uh, bad. For the time being. But flyable. That's very good for me. The snow does not help me. Luckily it's only light snow, so that's not too bad to move through. Okay. Where are they weak then? Okay. So you can see, uh, we have two brigades over here, so that's about, what, 10,000? No, yeah, about 10,000 men, perhaps? Round about that area. They kind of work out about 5,000 each-ish. We have some brigades over here. Backed up by another unit that I cannot see. Brigades here? A single brigade here. Two armoured brigades, a brigade of infantry, and a brigade of armoured, I should say. Ride infantry armoured. 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 Interesting. And over here we're seeing four divisions. Brigades over here, actually. There is an armoured division here, which would be the bloody hardest thing to stop. So, if we were to deal with this, we would have to probably get some reinforcements in there. Now, we have Forschkum Jäger divisions over here. Well, we have a division here. Uh, the Forschkum Jäger division uh, comprising the... Uh, is this the second Forschkum Jäger division? Interesting. Uh, so, the second Forschkum Jäger division is broken up into uh, its constituent brigades at the moment. Uh, with the majority being hit. Well, spread over here. So, I think what we have to do in the north to really try and even it out for us is to probably have these Fortigum Jaegers try and retake this position here in the Netherlands. If I could retake this position here and take control of the canals, basically the rivers over here, it would make it a lot easier on ourselves. And it would put some pressure on the allies in the north. They don't have that many men here besides. So, I'm going to get my good old bandy cam drawing tool up here. So we're going to go for a um, lightish brown if we have one. I don't really see a brown, but we'll go for this one then. As we can see here, then the allies... Actually, that's okay. So, um, actually, no, that's not too bright, is it? Let's go for a better colour. Okay. So the allies have divisions here. That's something to take account of. 
And another here. Here. So we'll mark off all the divisions that we can see. Now that's a significant amount of allied power right there. Potentially even more so here. Okay. So you can see from that the allies are stronger in places and weaker in others. So that's um, an interesting assessment. Now of course we do have to take into consideration what kind of units we're dealing with. So we have armoured brigades here. Armoured indeed. Not as much armour, but still, that's a decent amount of armour, so what can we estimate there? I'm going to go with the assumption that there's only one armour division in each of these here, so we'll go with one, two, three, four, uh, five and six armour divisions over here in the north alone. Now obviously the rest is uh, infantry divisions. So that does not leave as much to work with. At all. So they do have a concentration of strength in this area. If this is uh, true or not, I do not know. But we have to assume that this is the strongest point over here. Now, what kind of terrain are we dealing with over here? We have rough terrain. I was almost going to say clear, but that would have been too good for me. Light woods here. I do believe there's a hotkey to hide the units. Let's find it. Enemy hexes. It's here somewhere. Where are you? I must be missing it. Um. Okay, never mind. I'll um, check it out next time. Oh, I didn't know about this. Um, yes, we'll check that one out next time. I know there's a key somewhere, I just can't quite see it at the moment. And I do not want to bore you guys. Uh, just have a quick look, okay. Show... Yup, okay. I'm sure there's a bloody key. Right, so anyway, I'll have a look for that one later. So, what we need to do then is assess our logistical situation here. So we're going to press N, and we can see our rails over here. So our rails are actually a hell of a lot better than I would have assumed. Right, so that's not bad. That's kind of bad. So you can see here, these depots have been marked as priority, so this is where our advance is going to come from. Which I, um... I can see why. I can see why. I can uh, see what the idea was. Basically, the idea being... Uh, we'll get purple up here. And I'll go for a thicker brush, actually. Uh, I'll go for a pen, I don't really have anything larger. Hmm. Anyway, right then. So you can see here that we have our forces here. Uh, actually, now that'll do fine. Let's go with that purple. So you can see here the plan would be to strike like that. Basically, uh, cut off these allied forces in the north and separate the two armies here. Now, that's all well and good in um, theoretical, but in practice, uh, yeah, uh, we know that didn't quite work out. The reason is why. And uh, I suppose you could put it down to the Allied air superiority, the terrible weather, the Germans having very little fuel. Such is why I'm very interested in logistics. Let's take a look here. So, we're receiving our logistics mostly from Dusseldorf. Or Essen, I should say. I'm just used to saying Dusseldorf mostly because I used to date somebody from around here. I think Dusseldorf is like kind of like down here. I think it's like uh, Dortmund's here. Welcome. I think Dusseldorf is like kind of like... There. Oh no, that is, that is, okay, Dusseldorf, ah, uh, haha, <laughs> right, I got it wrong, yeah, uh, welcome, Dortmund, yeah, Dusseldorf there, I used to know something from there, fantastic, right then, anyway, so yes, most, if not all of our supplies are being sent out from Essen, now, how does that relate in reality? Ah, that's a lot of depot there, rail is pretty damn good. Right, we've got stored there quite a lot. Okay. 7,000 trucks. 62,500 freight. I'm going to assume that means rail, because there is a good number of rail links there. So in all... Uh, in all fairness, our logistics aren't bad at all. 
Which is surprising, actually. <laughs> I uh, did not assume that one. Indeed. I mean, especially over here, they're receiving a good supply. Ah, the fact that we have another depot over here. So it does make me wonder. And we do have the West Wall fortifications here, so that's fantastic. If we take a look at our fortified positions here, you can see that our fortified positions are bloody well fortified at that. Uh, do we have one over there? We do, yeah. So, level 3 across the board with some positions being at level 4 fortification. So all of this is something that we'd have to bear in mind with um, how we proceeded. Now, what's interesting here is the fact that we have these um, artillery brigades being separate, and these are actual proper brigades of um, artillery, which is really nice. The reason why that is really nice is because if they're, um, let's see, if they are part of the same headquarters, so basically part of the same core, I do believe. Uh, so say here, that um, artillery here, I'll go back to that pencil. Um, so if this unit here attacks this unit here, this artillery could fire on that unit over there. If they use a uh, decisive attack, well, a plunge strike, not a quick strike. Uh, what I mean uh, by that is basically, I would press shift and I would select that unit. I can't do it now due to the air phase. So, we have some fantastic positions. That position. Ooh. Mountain. Mountain. Clear. Right. Hmm. Now it's all well and good having two mountain positions, but honestly, this is really open. And my best bet here would be to, in fact, have these forces withdraw to this line here. Uh, we have the river here, we have the level 3 fortified positions with the west wall. So honestly, that would be the best choice there. I think I'd have to occupy that as well, I'm not entirely sure on that one. So yes, we'd have to occupy these positions here. Actually, no, is that Switzerland? That is actually Switzerland, so we don't need to worry about that one. It must have been really bloody interesting being in Switzerland during this time. And terrifying. Very, very terrifying. Anyway. Uh, so we'd have to withdraw this infantry over here. There is an opening uh, in these allied lines over here. Indeed. So we have one division here, holding this part of the line. I can see why these men are really, really under strength. It's bloody terrible how bad it is. Aye. You can really see here which units are meant to be doing the offensive actions. The fact that we have the artillery units in these uh, formations really does give it away. Then again, we do have some Panzer Grenadiers over here. And some SS Panzer Divisions. Aye, two divisions of Panzers here. What do we actually have inside them? Some Panther 4Js, oh sorry, Panzer 4Js. A Panther G. Good bloody tank. Some Hummels. Hmm. But no Tiger. Do we have the possibility of Tiger? No, actually. Interesting. No Tiger here either. <coughs> ah, excuse me. Do we have Tiger? Right production. King Tiger. Any normal tiger? Doesn't seem like we have normal tigers then. That's rather interesting. We have an elephant, jag tiger. Aye. So we have two units here. One of them equipped being, being equipped to a HQ. Ha <laughs> ha! 
Okay, wow. Uh, that is such a waste of resources there. Yeah, these Koenig's Tigers are absolutely fantastic. They are ridiculously powerful tanks here. Absolutely ridiculously powerful. Hi. Extremely valuable. So for them to be attached to a army group is madness. What is this army group? I'm looking for the 15th army. Right, so the 15th army being over here. Like, they do not need Koenigsteigers. They do not. Oh, boy. Am I glad I found that out? What are the other... Right, the first F... The first SF... SS Panzer Division. Bloody hell. Right over here. And you, my friend, are here. So this is our most powerful armor division. Indeed. So we have Panther G's, uh, Panzers. And... Uh, hmm. Interesting, I'm not seeing it. How oh, very interesting. Should be listed. They're definitely here. 45 ready. At least I think so. Right. Hmm. And what else do we have equipped here? Ah, right, so... Flak, self-propelled flak. Righto. Okay. Polish Gimjagers. Interesting, so this is only a brigade worth of Polish Gimjagers. The Dunker Garrison. I really doubt there'd be any save in this division. I really doubt that one. But the fact is that they're holding there for the time being. So we have some checkers of Viking armor there, I think. British rifles, okay. We do have some forces in Jersey and Guernsey. Some forces over here. Lorient. Yeah. Couple thousand men in the city. Right, so how many men do we have in total? Um, so under our command we have 1.6 million men. A good amount of that armor too. A bloody good amount of the uh, Reich's armor. A decent amount of planes actually. That's actually a really nice amount of planes. We're not outnumbered that heavily. Which makes a bloody change for a lot of offer. Righto. Righto. I can't help but feel these SS divisions were located in the wrong part. Well, just in the wrong place, really. Right, we have some Fulcrum Jaegers in here. We have some other divisions here. Panzer Grenadiers. Hmm. So where is Baston? Baston is here somewhere. There's Liege there. Mamadi. Ah, uh, where is Baston? I know it's here.
Hmm. Ah, Baston. So here is the town of Baston. Just underneath these forces here. Okay. Interesting. So we gained a lot of points for actually taking Baston Arc and Arnhem clear. Right. That's pretty damn interesting then. So I mean the objective is Antwerp. But if we could take the other cities we'd gain quite a lot of victory points here. An automatic victory is not actually possible. Right, that's kind of harsh. right -oh. So, what kind of planes are we working with then? Let's take a look at our air headquarters. Right. Ah, that's a good amount of planes. That is indeed a good amount of planes. So we have a hell of a lot here. Over 2,000 planes attached to this command here. A significant number of uh, BF-109s. Some fuckle Wolf 190s. Even some Messerschmitts 262s. Bloody hell. You know, I'd like to take a look at this. Let's take a look at this. Uh, where's my Messerschmitts? Messerschmitts. Right, so we can see our numbers in real here. Right, here we go. So we've got some 260A1As, uh, 262A1As U3. What's the difference here? Okay, so your reconnaissance, that's rather interesting. You still do carry twin 30mm uh, cannons and you do have a high level camera. We could change your loadout, or not actually. Hmm. Very interesting. 549 miles per s well, per hour. 149, four 30 millimeter cannons, bloody hell. Uh, we could have given them some drop tanks now, how would that affect them? Hmm. Radius is 228 miles. So if I put a drop tank on here, how could that affect things? Hmm. Interesting. So we lose a lot of speed, actually. So actually, it would not be worthwhile. Would definitely not be worthwhile. Right on. So what are the F, uh, the, uh, Focke Wolf 190s, like, the F8 versions? Uh, so this is a tactical bomber, apparently. Right, that's quite a heavy payload. That's a significant payload. <laughs> Bloody hell. Hmm. <sighs> I mean, I can see why. I can see why they're given so many uh, bombs like that. Obviously, during this phase, it's um, key to really attack the American airfields. So we can see they have most of them over here, 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 and here. Barring that, there's not many close. There's a good number down here. But the most are in these positions here. Which is really important, actually. Hmm. Bear in mind, these are level 3 airfields over here, while this is only level 2. So I've got to wonder if they would be having any troubles with that. right Oh. How would we do this, then? So I think we would have to support the SS... Really? With them having our, well, the vast majority of our armoured here. Now, what kind of fuel are we looking at? We're looking about, um... Ah, uh, 74% fuel? That's not a lot of fuel, really. 
Yeah, you can see these divisions are bloody weakened. They should have significantly more than they do. Which is um, pretty indicative of our problems. I could help them by signing some self-propelled artillery, some anti-tank, and um, honestly, probably some anti-air would really do wonders for them. At least it helped them be more survivable. So what do we have available? We have uh, two armored divisions here. Armored. Panzergrenadier. Okay. Another armored division, actually. Right, so we have another armored division here. So this is the first SS Panzer. Right. So it seems that the infantry here are meant to open the way up for our armored forces to get through. But where would they do that, considering they're up against troops that are much, well, better at this point, they just are better equipped. If I take a look over here, and we look for... experience, you can see here that's varying levels of experience. We have some veterans. Actually, it seems like most of our veterans are actually concentrated in this area, or as many as we really do have. Supplies are pretty... Okay, here-ish, kinda. Fuel as good as it can be, but ammunition's okay. Right. Actually, we'll go back to supply priority. So you can see here on supply priority, uh, these units here, I imagine they're probably on highest levels of priority right now. Uh, so we'll take a look. Uh, your headquarters over here. Who the hell are you attached to? Right, ah, right, I see, okay. Uh, so your priority is level 4. Your priority is level 4, okay. You guys operate over here at level 3 priority. Uh, so this is really where the main advance is meant to come from. And, um, hmm... It's not the best area. I think honestly it would be a lot easier to punch through over here, potentially. It really does depend. I think we'd really have to be um, able to use these artillery pieces here. There's not that much artillery either. I mean, our divisions here have 160 on their own. So I suppose it is like another third ish of their um, assigned artillery. So I could have some infantrymen assigned to them, but why would I do that? I'd rather have some actual, ah, bloody hell, with a Panzergrenadier Brigade. Ah, I don't want a brigade, I want a division. Pathetic. Ah, we have a Panzer 2. Right, so we have two Panzer. Righto. So the enemy are dug in at level 1. Pretty much across the board due to the fact of it being winter. Hmm. Of course we have um, US armoured and US infantry behind here. There's a good amount of armor here, I do have to point that one out, there's a lot of armor here. We'd really have to pick our targets, and we'd really have to decide here. Uh, which is probably, well, partly why I've not decided to do this as a series yet, because it's a short campaign, and there's a lot that can go wrong. And you are most likely to lose as the Axis, it's going to be bloody difficult to win, if possible at all. I. So it would have to be won or lost by the infantry. Won or lost by pretty much the first push, really. So I think we'd have to probably... Uh, push her from probably here. I think what we'd have to do is basically have these guys to block off the advances. That sort of thing, and have the Panzers go for the center. But yes, anyway guys, I know this has been quite a long ramble here. Uh, but this is like kind of the things that you have to try and go through. And I've enjoyed this. I hope you guys have enjoyed this as well. So if you have, do let me know. Uh, no, down in the comments.